welcome to the Chronically Awesome Podcast with me, Katie Rose, recording my thoughts and realizations about the mind, the body, and all things we do, looking at life through the lens of spirituality, and sharing things I believe should be taught to everyone so we can begin to heal the next generations, healing traumas, transcending the ego, and living an empowered, soul-led life of pure awesomeness. Welcome, my beautiful soul. So we are stepping into the energy of February. So I I love energy. I love to have a look at what the energy of the month is kind of giving to us so that we can maybe align with it or have an idea of what it's bringing so that we can basically use it to our advantage. You want to be working with your energy rather than working against it. It's like the tide. You you want to flow with it. You want to be easy. You don't want to be swimming against the tide and fighting for every stroke. So this is why I love to check in with the monthly energies and see what is going on. So this month, February, we are stepping into a nine energy. And the nine is very sort of compassionate. It is the sort of giving to others, being of service. And it's got that humanitarian sort of energy around it, really showing up for others. But it's not just that. It also comes into us and the creative part of ourselves and exploring that part of ourselves, allowing ourselves to maybe try something new, try something different. It also brings in this beautiful energy of sharing. Okay, this is what I love because sometimes people think of being of service is having to maybe give up your time, maybe giving to charities, giving money. And especially at the moment, we may not have that spare money to give. And that is okay. How else can you show up? So yeah, you can give your time. But then if you don't have time and you don't have money, how else can you share? How else can you show up for someone? And a beautiful way to do this is just by sharing some knowledge just giving little tidbits here and there that you found useful for you. And you will all have your own unique abilities, your own unique experiences that give you insight to all different things. And this month kind of asks you to to share what you know. Share what you know. Think about the things that you have been through everybody's been through things. Everybody has learned things. Everybody has found things that work for them. Share them. Share them with others. Help people. Use your skills, your learnings, your wisdoms to your advantage. Use it so that you can help others see the light, to find themselves again, to know that you are like maybe the end product of what they could achieve, to know that they can get through that, to come out the other side of that that this isn't for always, because we can really get stuck in, this is it. This is my life now. And I I will hold my hand up. I was that person. I was so stuck where I was that I literally didn't think there was anything else out there for me. I thought that I had experienced success by um, being an athlete and doing well in that. I thought I have my two children now. So I experienced um, being a mum and that love. I have my husband. So I experienced what it's like to have a beautiful, loving relationship. So then I was like, well, what else is that? And then there wasn't really much else that I could do either at this point. So this is when I was like pretty much living on a sofa, unable to move much. And I was like, well, this is it. This must be my lot. I just experienced everything younger than most people. Um, and and this is this is the way that I will be living my life from now on, just in a corner, in darkness, just watching everybody live their lives. I truly thought that and I was stuck there. I didn't see any other option. And then I I found it for myself um, is the way that I did it because I didn't know anybody else that had kind of been through what I'd been through and come out the other side of it. So I had to find my own way. So by you sharing your story, you could be helping somebody who was like me, who doesn't know another way, who hasn't seen somebody come out the other side of it. You could be that for them. 
you could be that moment of, well, they did it. So can I, they did it this way. I'm going to try that. I hadn't thought of that. It's about really giving what you know. Knowledge is so powerful. And I think people get confused with knowledge is power and they see it as like becoming like the greatest person of all as I, I own you. And that, that's the way that it kind of <laughs> kind of like appears in my mind or used to appear in my mind then. The way that I see this now is when I say knowledge is power, is not the power that you have over people, it's the power that you have within yourself. And the more knowledge you gain, the more powerful you become over your own life, over your own behaviors, your own actions, understanding things at deeper levels, understanding yourself, understanding that our experiences aren't our truth, understanding that we are so much more than we believe ourselves to be, and that wherever you are right now isn't where you're going to be further down the line, because that's not how life works. You don't just stay in one place forever. And if you feel like you are, then you're trapped. And it's probably your mind that is trapping you there because your mind loves familiarity. It loves habits. It creates programs to run over and over again. So it knows what's happening. It knows what it's doing. It doesn't like the unknown because it doesn't know what's going to happen. So there's fear instantly instilled before you do anything because it doesn't know what's going to happen. So this really kind of links in as well to that overall energy of the seven that this year is carrying as well, which is very sort of introspective. And the nine is asking you to call on the inner parts of yourself that you have learned, that you have discovered and share it with those that haven't got there yet. Because we're all on different journeys. We're all on different paths. You will have knowledge that somebody that is at the beginning of their journey that was similar to yours doesn't have. And then you'll find people along your journey that has more knowledge than you because they've been where you are and you're on your way to being where they are. And it's all about kind of taking in, taking in information. And my biggest thing is take what resonates, leave anything else behind. Because if you get fixated on what that doesn't make sense, that can't be right. But there's a part of what they've said that does resonate. And then because you're so fixated on the bit that doesn't, you tend to not want to take any of it because this is how the mind works. (laughs) And so this is why I say to just take what resonates, leave anything else behind, because maybe you are listening to somebody who is further along on their path. So they have had their own discoveries, awakenings, aha moments that you haven't reached yet. Because maybe your belief system isn't quite there yet. Maybe you're still working with some beliefs that are limiting you, that aren't allowing you to see this opportunity or this different perspective. And when somebody gives you information that instantly triggers this limiting belief that you have, you don't want to take it. And that's okay. Like This is the thing. It's okay if you're not ready to take that information, if you're not there yet. You may find, though, that as you go on your journey, as you keep going, as you keep moving, you'll get to a point and you're like, ah, that makes sense now. That I can understand. But you just weren't ready to hear it whenever you heard it. That's all it is. So leave it. Don't do anything with it if it's not resonating at that time. Just take the things that get you thinking that get you curious, that get you going, oh, is that true? If I looked at it that way, how would I, how would I react in that situation if I could understand that person better? Or if I could understand where this anger is coming from and how the mind works and why it's being brought forward and what it is that I maybe said that triggered them that's got nothing to do with me. It's just their experience from past experiences, from the way they were brought up, from the way they may have been treated by someone. It's fascinating in how many layers there are to us. And I love it. I do. I really love all this stuff. (laughs) So this month really is about you allowing yourself to be wherever you are, but to have these aha moments, to hear these bits of information from other people that may help you, but also be that person for other people to give bits of information, if you hear them saying something that you completely sympathize with, that you completely understand, you've been there, you've experienced it, 
then you can give information and say, I, I know this. I know where you are. I truly have felt this. And I found this helpful. Obviously, you sometimes you might have to check in and ask if they even want that information because, you know, unsolicited advice isn't always, <laughs> always <laughs> received very well. And that's fine. But it depends on the situation. It depends on where you are. It depends on what is going on. But if you are with somebody and they're sharing with you, you can ask them, do you want me just to listen here? Because I can do that. Do you want me to give um, my opinion or my advice or my thoughts? Because I can do that. What is it that you need from me today? And that's a great way to show up for someone because then you are being who they need you to be. But if you are maybe on a platform of some kind and you're doing something or sending an email out um, to say you've got followers or whatever it is, then sharing what worked for you can be extremely helpful because it will land on the people that need to hear it. I believe everything happens for a reason. I believe we hear things for a reason. I believe I believe everything is just supposed to happen the way it's supposed to happen um, and that we get choices in those moments and it's up to us on how we choose and how we move forwards. But then we have to deal with the consequences of that on what we chose and what we didn't choose and what we showed up to do and what we didn't show up to do. And that is, again, lessons to be learned, things to learn from. And this is this, this is what you're sharing. You're sharing that with people. So when we're in a month like this, you know, it's very sort of awakening. It is very spiritual. There is a big spiritual energy for February, basically. That is the overall arching energy. And the way that I see it is a very sort of um, shifting energy. Your mind seeing things differently, um, your consciousness evolving, understanding things from completely different perspectives. And that's another thing the nine brings in is that broad mindedness to be able to see things from a bird's eye view, to be able to see things differently, to to go, OK, well, this isn't working. Let's step back. Let's see the bigger picture of what's really happening here. So that's another thing that you are kind of being asked into this month and to just check in check in. If something's not working, just check in and go, right, why is this not working? Let's take a step back and see where I'm getting stuck. Let's see if there's a different option. Let's see if there's another opportunity. Let's see if somebody has been through this and can help me. Really just breathing, really breathing into the space that you find yourself in this month. So you're really sort of developing your self-awareness this month. I love self-awareness. I think if you if you're going to grow as a person, you have to have self-awareness because you're not going to change. Nothing will change if you don't change. Nothing will change if you are still in the same pattern, still running the same programs, unable to see things from different perspectives, unable to understand the underlying sort of limiting beliefs, the root causes that are causing all these things to come out of you or to bring these situations in front of you. And as you build this sort of higher level of self-awareness, this is when things really start to change because this is when your mind is like, ah, oh. this is when the ego starts to quieten, okay, when you are in a place of self-awareness. So the ego is, we need it, we do. But we have been brought up to not really understand the ego, to see it as something separate as well from ourselves as a thing when it's not. <laughs> it is just an accumulation of our thoughts, our experiences, our beliefs, and it just creates programs to protect us because that is ultimately its goal is to survive, to keep you alive. And it will do whatever it needs to, to do that. And we can get stuck in autopilot because of the ego, because maybe we're in survival mode. So the ego takes over because it needs to keep you alive because it believes it is the thing that keeps you alive. And it believes that like your heart wouldn't pump without it. Like you couldn't breathe without it. And that's not true. <laughs> so we are basically in a place where we could be really transcending the ego through this month, really moving through some really maybe icky sticky stuff that we haven't been able to either move through or we weren't able or ready to see yet. So you may have these things appearing in your life or memories coming up that are like, where the fuck is that coming from? Like, why am I thinking that? I don't want to think about that. And it's there for a reason because your mind will present you with something 
like a memory when you're ready to release something, when you're ready to let go. So this month may bring up some past stuff for you guys, but know that it only, it literally only brings stuff up when you are ready to let it go because it will protect you at all costs. So if something is coming up, it means that you don't need protecting from this anymore. Like just, just leave that for a moment, just to, just to think about that. When your ego, when your mind brings something up that feels so uncomfortable to you because you're like, oh, I hated that. Oh, I cringe at that, whatever it may be. Your ego is like, I don't need to protect you from this anymore. So you can let it go. So work through it. Sometimes it's as simple as the self-awareness acknowledging it and going, oh, okay, thank you. I, I recognize that I don't need this anymore. I'm allowed to let that go. I give myself permission to let that go. And it's as simple as that sometimes. Sometimes you might need to sit with it a bit longer and be like, okay, well, why is this coming up? Where's it coming from? Who gave this to me? When when was my earliest memory of this happening when I started to feel this way about this certain thing? Like you, you can dig into it. Like I love digging into stuff, um, but you don't have to if... Obviously, you don't want to because we have choice. We have free will. But the consequence of that, of not actually facing it and trying to shove it back down, is that you're holding on to it, like physically, emotionally. Like it's literally in your energy. It is literally in your cells. It is being stored within the body. You will feel it physically because you're trying to push it back down to somewhere it doesn't belong. And it may come up, you may notice like a certain thing comes up, like it's like a cycle and it comes up again. You're like, oh, what am I thinking about this? I thought, I thought we were done with this. And it's because you didn't fully let it go or you tried to push it back down again. And it just keeps coming back up because you, <laughs> your mind is literally telling you, let it go. Okay, we need to get rid of this. This spring clean. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And you're like, no, no, keep it. Push it back down. Put it in that box. Put it back down there. Lock it away. So we need to just allow these emotions because sometimes you just need to cry it out. Like it's as simple as that sometimes, just cry it out. Don't need to know any content. Don't need to know why it's there. All you need to know is it's ready to go. Sometimes that's all it is. So this is the energy of this month. This is what is coming up and this is what we are being asked to look at, to be sort of on, not on alert, but on just the awareness again, just having an awareness that this may be happening, that you may be holding a lot of sort of knowledge that you could be giving to others. But I also want to say about the creative side, like do what lights your soul up. We forget about our creative side. And I think people think creative as well is like painting or drawing and those types of things. But poems or writing a book or um, crafting something like um, sewing, knitting, like there is so many different things. If you are making something that didn't exist before, that is creating. If you had a blank piece of paper and then something is on it that you put on it, that is you creating something. Like it doesn't have to be hard work, guys. It doesn't. Singing, dancing, like these are all things that are creative, that are freeing, that are something that makes your soul feel like you are able to escape sometimes. That's my thing with <clears throat> with being creative. I, I like to f- feel like I'm just in a completely different world for that moment, wherever, whatever I'm doing. So if I'm painting and stuff, like I am so like absorbed into it, like hours go past. I'm like, oh, where did that go? It's because I was just enjoying it so much that I just... I just can't help myself but be in this place of wonder, curiosity, of it doesn't matter what is gonna what the outcome is. It literally doesn't matter because I'm just enjoying being present and being in this moment. That's what matters because I enjoy it. It's the joy that we are looking for. So I would say that this month, just really sort of give without expecting anything in return. So if you're like helping someone, don't expect to have something back. Just do it because you want to do it, because it feels good for you, because you are getting something out of it internally. And to learn, this is a fun one to practice as well, to learn to do things and to just be with unconditional love. So this means like the giving without one without expecting anything in return. That's unconditional love. You are doing that out of pure joy, out of pure love. 
Um, but you can do this as well. Like you can, you can, or you can really try, like try. Um, and it's again, it's, this is a practice, okay? To say like you're in an argument with your partner or something, and your initial reaction is to maybe shout or scream or whatever it is. And this, you do this with your kids as well. I do this with my daughter and like, I take a breath and then I'm like, no, we're going to approach this with love. We're going to approach this in a different way. Because if I start to lose my shit in this moment, I'm just becoming a toddler. I'm just becoming somebody that can't control or deal with their emotions at that moment. So I'm becoming her, like I'm screaming back at her. So by bringing in unconditional love, it's saying, it's okay that you feel like this. It's okay that you're you're screaming and shouting because I know that this is your way of expressing right now. And that's okay. When you calm down, then we can have a chat. Then we can look into whatever it is that is bothering you really. Because most of the time, whatever is coming out at me is not actually the reason that caused her to start arguing or shouting at me. It's normally something else that's going on most of the time. And it's hard for my daughter as well to try and kind of figure that out because she struggles with naming emotions and naming what it is. So it becomes more frustrating and she becomes angrier because of she can't get it out then. So then that just makes her tense up more and become more angry. So, and I used to be exactly like her. So my reaction was to do the same back, which got us nowhere. Um, and we were just letting shit out at each other and gaining nothing other than maybe just getting a little bit of something out um, that we were holding on to. And I, it took so much practice, so much practice. And I still fail. I still fail some days. I am not going to lie where I'll shout and scream and then I'll come away like, Katie, why did you do that? What did that achieve? But that's all part of it. Like that is the learning to go, right, okay, something triggered me there that clearly wasn't able to deal with that in that moment. And I'll go to her and I'll apologize. And I'll be like, look, I did not handle that well. But I let my kids know like, I haven't done this before. Like, I don't know how to deal with these situations. I don't know how to be a mum until I'm in that moment trying to figure it out. So sometimes we've got to figure it out together. And I ask them, how would you have liked me to approach that? Like, what could I have done there? Or I'll ask them, what do you need from me? What do you need from me right now? Do you need a hug? Do you need some time alone? What is it that you need right now? Because my children are so different as well. So like they need very different things in the same situation. Like it's so opposite. So I have to check in because what works for one doesn't work for the other. And this is something that we are just constantly being asked to work on for ourselves. Because if you are being triggered, then you have something within you that isn't healed. There's something unresolved there. So that is something you need to work on because it's never, it's never the other person. It's never that. It's just, they triggered something in you in that moment that you weren't able to deal with. (laughs) And that's okay. This is the thing, right? We are human. We are human. We fuck up all the bloody time, but we learn as well. That's, that's the beauty of us. We learn, but Some of us don't because we don't want to admit that maybe we were wrong. That's one. Like my husband won't admit that he's wrong. He hates it. So like it's holding yourself in humility and love, that unconditional love for yourself to say, it's okay that I fucked up. It's okay that I screamed the house down. What are you going to do about it? That's the difference. Are you going to repeat that same mistake or are you going to try better? How are you going to handle this aftermath? Like, are you just going to leave her in her room crying her eyes out? Or are you going to go in and apologize and say, I did not handle that well. I could have done that better. And then see where it goes from that. Like, there is so much that we can we can do and learn every single day. And it is hard work. So some days you do need to give yourself a break and be like, like, I can't do it today. Like, I'm just, I'm just, whew, I, I need to sit on the sofa and watch some Netflix. I need that some days. But then other days, like, I'm just really self-aware. I'm really self-aware of when my, my kids are saying something and I'm like, I know my initial reaction. I know what I want to say. I know how I want to approach it. But then I'm like, no, that doesn't work for them. I need to approach this in the way that's going to work for them, not what I want. It's not about me in this moment. 
this is unconditional love. This is about them. This is about what they need in this moment. And that is just something that really does take time. I'm still working on it. I am far from perfect. Um, and there is still a lot that I, I want to learn and know, especially with communicating with my daughter, because it is like an entirely different language to me. My son is more like me. Like he is, his language, I know I can do that. So my daughter is definitely still a learning curve for me. Um, and I just have to, it's a trial and error, really, basically. I just try different things, see what works, but I have to learn her body language because of the words don't match what is going on or that she can't find her words. Her body language is, she's basically my husband. I've had to learn his body language to understand him and she is the same. And it's still taking me time to figure this out. It's, it, it's, if someday it, it, it's hard. It's frustrating. I feel like a shit mum. I have mum guilt. I cry. I, I just have a moment where I'm like, I have fucked up. Or why is she like this to me? I'll have one of my moments where it's all about me and that's okay. But it is all, all learning, all of it, life in general, not just being a mum, like working, having a business, being a wife. These are all things that have their own expressions, their own way of communicating with you. And it's about learning that and learning that not everyone works the same way as you, that their mind doesn't filter the same way as you, that it doesn't have the same internal representations as what you do. And when you start to see that and understand that, it becomes easier to go, okay, they clearly see things differently to me. Let's ask them questions. Like, <laughs> ask questions. I'm always asking my kids like things because I'm trying to figure stuff out. And I try and ask my husband things as well sometimes because I'm like, what, what were you thinking there? Like, how did that even come about? Because my husband is very good at seeing things that I can't see. He'll see things in a complete different way. He's a very good way of being able to see like the bigger picture or he can figure things out in his mind in a way that I can't or see things, see things in his mind that I can't. And I'm like, how can you see that? You have to draw that out for me because I phys- I cannot, I cannot, I cannot compute. I cannot understand it. And he gets frustrated because he can't understand why I can't see it his way. So it's all, it's all, it's all a game. It's all a learning. Um, but it's fun as well that you can make it fun. You can be like, get curious. Like, wow, you see it that way, really? And sometimes it's hard. It's hard for us to understand that as well because we're like, I don't, I don't understand because I don't work that way. So that is something that you have to try and empathize with and, and be like, okay, let me try and, and, and put myself in your shoes. Let me try and figure this out your way. Let me try and work like, but like you have to work as a team then you have to communicate. And this is something, you know, so for my daughter, we have to communicate in that way. So that's a practice for her so that I can try and figure things out in the same way that as her mind works, because it is so different to mine. Um, so yeah, so I would love to hear from you guys um, to, to know like what, in this episode resonated what moments did you take away and go ah this makes sense or you have that just moment of epiphany or whatever it may be for you but I actually want to end with because I love I love cards I love oracle cards tarot cards any type of cards um and I just want to bring in we're going to do an animal card to bring in the energy to kind of embrace i think i did this last time i can't remember um to embrace the this this animal energy for the month of my listeners here of what like the universal energy for us to kind of tap into Ooh, and we have the the tiger. So if you are watching the video version on YouTube, then you will see that I have, well, you see the card, but you will see that I have an A3 print of the tiger because this was one of my first cards I designed in this deck, actually. But it's very spiritual as well. So it's just summing up what we've been saying. It's like this awareness, this um, connection to something bigger than ourselves, that universal connection. I also see it kind of like the whispers from the universe. So having self-awareness allows you to hear those whispers, to step out of the ego, to go, okay, what else is here? What am I being guided to? There's a lot of sort of inner um, connection as well that comes through this, the inner spiritual connection. The card actually says, trust in your visions and lead the way. The more that you can tap into 
yourself in what you want and stepping out of all of the what society asks of you, what your parents ask of you, what your partner's asking of you, what your children are asking of you. When you step out of all of those roles, all of those layers, all of those identities, who's left? What's left? What do you want? And how can you get there? Start thinking about what lights you up but like how can you do this how can you show up in the world doing what you love and you enjoy and then start planning it out making some steps taking some actions but as well with the tiger energy it's also saying as well like this month is you stepping into the light you're stepping out of the darkness so there is a shift and mentally it feels like there's a shift um coming and also what else was there then? There was a little extra there of stepping out of the darkness um, and and seeing things from that that different perspective, seeing a different light, that hope light, finding the hope light within you and allowing it to start burning brighter. And as that starts burning brighter, this is when, you know, you the visions come more clearer. You have that clarity. You feel like you have that strength to lead the way, to take the courage to move forwards. That is what is coming through through the whole of this month, but you do have to be open to it. You do have to say like right now, say to yourself, I am open to receiving this energy that is working with me this month. I am open to sharing my knowledge. I'm giving my pers- myself permission to show up for myself. I am going to show up with unconditional love for myself and those around me, for every situation I find myself in, for ever tr- ever trigger every triggering moment that appears through this month and just see how it plays out. Like if you, if you feel like you're falling down, if you feel like you're fucked up, just tell yourself it's okay. You tried your best with the resources that you had at the time. You tried your best and that is it. That's all that you can ask of yourself. And then you can, you can evaluate those things and go, okay, well, what can I do differently next time? I love a bit of an evaluation. I say like if I've if I've had a right trigger a moment um and I've lost it or I behaved in a way that is like, oh my God, why did I do that? Uh, I will sit with myself and I'll be like, why did I do that? What was it that triggered me? What was that first moment where I felt like, oh, um, or whatever it was? And ask myself like little questions. I love it. I love asking myself a little question because by the end of it, I'm like, oh, well, that came from nothing that I thought it was going to come from. And I just felt unseen or I felt unheard or I felt like somebody took my choice away, whatever it may be. But it's so simple sometimes of just sitting with a couple and just maybe figuring things out and asking yourself a couple of questions. And then and then you get to leave it. You don't have to carry that around with you anymore. It's like, okay, right, that's done. Right. Well, now I know next time I just feel unseen. So I can say, look, you doing this or you saying this, you acting this way, you walking away or whatever it may be, you make me feel unseen and that's not okay. And then have a conversation about it. Oh, I love a good, I love a good gossip. I love a good sort of chat about these sort of things. I hope you find this helpful that you like these um, episodes. I do, I do really love a good chat. Um, So I am going to leave it there, my loves. Thank you for joining me and I will see you again next time. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have. If you did, please share on social media or if you'd like to share your thoughts with me directly, then you can message me at HopeLightUK on Instagram. And if you haven't done so already, hit the follow button to follow the podcast for more awesomeness and I'll see you here next time.